More victims of alleged child abuse have been meeting Home Office officials this afternoon to formally withdraw from the government's inquiry. In an open letter to the Home Secretary, 28 individuals claim the investigation is not fit for purpose. Sky's political correspondent Jason Farrell reports. The UK's biggest ever abuse inquiry is in danger of collapse before it's begun, with victims threatening to pull out of the process. Today we met survivors and campaigners who'd come to London from all corners of the UK for a meeting at the Home Office. Andy, a victim of abuse at a Catholic boarding school, says the government needs to accept that the investigation has got off on the wrong foot. They need to pause. They need to say, yeah, we've made a wee boo-boo here. They need to think, before we make any more, will we lose any more credibility and any more trust with survivors? Because we don't respect authority. We've been terribly harmed. They need to recognise that. We have to get it right now. It has to be a Royal Commission. It has to be judge-led has to ensure that victims <coughs> and survivors get proper legal support and counselling during this whole process. Abuse victim Andy Kershaw arrived from Bristol, one of 24 campaigners and survivors who signed a letter objecting to the current inquiry panel for having conflicting interests. In order for the victims to feel comfortable in coming forward and giving their evidence, they have to have confidence in the people that, that sit on the panel. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. It has to be right from the start. Another survivor in McFadgen boycotted today's meeting, deciding he could no longer engage with the inquiry. We're being wheeled in and wheeled out as survivors, and I refuse to go down and sit with, with, with this meeting today and give it my credibility by sitting at the table, because I, I truly think that so far, this is an inquiry that's not fit for purpose. Sky News has learned that one victim claims to have been sent an abusive message by a panel member. But this inquiry has been in trouble from the outset. On the 9th of July, the Home Secretary appointed Senior Judge Lady Butler Sloss to chair the inquiry. Victims weren't happy because her late brother was Attorney General in the 1980s, and she stepped down five days later. In September, lawyer Fiona Wolfe was given the chair, but social links with the former Home Secretary Leon Britton were cited as a reason for her unsuitability. He could be called to give evidence about his handling of child abuse allegations in the 1980s. Mrs Wolf stepped down at the end of October. The victims have suggested three possible candidates to take the chair. Lady Justice Hallett, Michael Mansfield QC and the Deputy Head of the Supreme Court, Baroness Hale. But after today's meeting, survivors said they were willing to give the Home Office more time. Seems to be moving on the right lines. It looks as if there will be some form of statutory inquiry. With a, with a different remit. But Scottish victims were angered to learn their cases won't form part of the inquiry. Well, we're going to be shortchanged yet again, basically. Yeah, it's quite um, just, um, unsettling to hear. Home Office officials and victims will meet again in January when campaigners expect a concrete proposal that meets their concerns. But Scottish victims will now ask the Scottish Parliament for an inquiry. Jason Barrow, Sky News. Jason joins us now live from Westminster. It does seem, Jason, despite all the, uh, the storm around us, that progress is being made slowly. Yeah, I think the choir is a little bit safer tonight than it was uh, earlier today. One of the victims said to me when they came out that judging by the, the, the bloodshot eyes around the table, they figured that the Home Office officials had been working around the clock on this. And certainly I think they will have been since they saw that letter that we uh, revealed yesterday uh, with all the signatories on it saying effectively they were just going to pull out unless they got their demands met. And one of the key demands was that they wanted this to be a statutory inquiry from the outset. Uh, and they are more confident that that's going to happen. I think the reason why they're confident is because they're being given assurances that they are going to be able to choose the chair of this panel, that they will be very much involved in that, and they know that they will not choose a chair who will accept an inquiry that isn't a statutory inquiry. So given that logic, they think that's going to happen. But nonetheless, they're waiting to see what happens in January. There are still some people who refuse to go up to this meeting, who turn up to this meeting, uh, and are still very much disillusioned with the whole process but I think there are enough people involved who are willing to give the Home Office just that little bit more time and hear what they have to say when they come back in January. Jason thanks very much indeed Jason Farrell there in Westminster and that story likely to feature prominently in tomorrow's